What does this election mean for the relationship between the ICC and African states? First, well, we need to recall why this relationship is as frosty as it is. And to my mind, there are at least two factors for that. First is how does the prosecutor perceive their role? And then secondly, how does the prosecutor go about situation and case selection? So how does the prosecutor perceive their role? For almost two decades now, the ICC has sought to convince anyone who is listening that it is above the political fray, that it is above the politics of states. And I believe that this is a very counterproductive narrative because it effectively shuts the door on any potential meaningful conversation between the ICC and state parties, particularly state parties from the African continent. We need to recall at this point that the ICC is first and foremost an intergovernmental organization established by states through a political process. And then secondly, it is a judicial mechanism. The first and only permanent international criminal court. So the fact that the ICC is an IGO established by states through a political process and the fact that the ICC is a judicial mechanism are so fundamentally intertwined that they cannot be divorced. So what would I expect of the next prosecutor? I would expect the next prosecutor to depart from the path taken by her predecessors and adopt an approach of self-awareness, an approach that acknowledges the position that they find themselves in, the position being that the ICC operates against the backdrop of political process that established it and that the political process still influences the environment in which the ICC operates and that influence will continue for you know, for at least the foreseeable future. And why is this acknowledgement important? This acknowledgement is important because once the prosecutor acknowledges this fact, he or she would be in a better position to navigate the politics surrounding her work and in that regard open a channel for meaningful dialogue between states that are skeptical of the ICC's work. Case selection and situation selection. Well, there's been uh, quite a considerable debate uh, over what, whether or not the ICC is biased against, against Africa. Regardless of which side of the debate you are on on this particular issue, you would realize that there are valid reasons and concerns on both sides of this debate. However, what's more important to me is what has been the result of this debate. The result of this debate, in my estimation, is that it has created a perception of bias, uh, such that the ICC now operates in an environment where it is perceived to be biased. So what would I expect the next prosecutor to do about this? Well, simple. Get on with the business of being the prosecutor of an international criminal court and stop acting like the prosecutor of a regional court. The ICC is an international criminal court. And indeed, the Rome Statute gives very wide powers to the Office of the Prosecutor to investigate situations across the world, of course, depending on whether or not he or she has jurisdiction in that particular area. So stop focusing on one particular part of the world and make full use of your powers and go everywhere whether or not you have jurisdiction. This is not to say that the ICC should stop investigating situations and cases in Africa. No, that should continue because the ICC performs a very important role against impunity on the African continent. But what I'm saying is expand your reach. And in doing so, of course, we may see a reduction in uh, at least the argument that the ICC is biased against African states. What does this election mean for communities in African states? Well, I am but just one African, so I cannot purport to speak on behalf of all Africans. I will say this for myself, though. The ICC has a serious diversity problem, and this is particularly very unfortunate if we consider the fact that the ICC has been in existence for almost two decades now, and also if you consider the fact of the diversity of the court's membership. If you are a prosecutor and you are investigating situations and running cases in African states and your team does not have African prosecutors, your team does not have African investigators, your team does not have African case analysts, your team does not have African legal officers, your team does not have African interns, your team probably has only one or two African translators, then you start losing the plot. You start losing the plot because the communities impacted by your work will look at you, they will look at your team and they will fail to identify with you. They will fail to identify the work that your team does and they will fail to identify with the work that the institution that you purport to work for does. Now how should the prosecutor go about changing this unfortunate situation? Well. The, most of the people who work at the OTP at the moment are from North America and Europe. 
what I would expect of the next prosecutor is to go beyond the slogan hearing because for the past several years we've heard all the slogans of the ICC aspiring to diversity and inclusion but there has been very little if any action following the slogans so I would expect that the next prosecutor goes beyond the slogan hearing and revamps her office to reflect the diversity of the human family and to reflect the diversity of the court's membership. How about the new crop of judges? Well, there was a rather unfortunate comment in an independent expert review report to the, uh, to the effect that judges at the ICC consider themselves to be aristocrats while everybody else is a commoner. This is pretty unfortunate because it reveals a particular attitude on the bench, an attitude that, that affects the relationship that the bench has with everybody else who works at the ICC and an attitude that affects the way the bench perceives its own role in the whole grand scheme of things. So what would I expect the new crop of judges to do? Go to The Hague, go to the ICC with a different mentality from your peers. Go to The Hague with a mentality that is more receptive to building a relationship between the work you do at the ICC and the communities that are impacted by your work. And how can you do this? Start by being more receptive to holding in C2 trials. I do not understand why two decades later the ICC is still very insistent upon holding entire trials, entire hearings at The Hague in the Netherlands, very far away from situation countries. So at the very least, be more receptive to holding trials, or at least parts of those trials, in situation countries. Thereby, you will start the long process of building meaningful connections between the court and the communities that are affected by the court's work.